The Sleeping Beauty There once lived a good king and a gentle queen who ruled a rich and happy land. Everywhere there was laughter and song among the people, but in the palace there was also a bit of sorrow. The king and the queen were somewhat sad because they had no children. The people are our children, my dear. Yes, but I do so wish we had a real child of our own. Every year they said their prayers to God and at last their prayers were answered. Thank you, Lord. A baby girl was born to them, tender as the dawn and bright as the day. She was the most beautiful baby in all the land. The day of the princess's birthday will be a holiday and there will be feasting and dancing in every town and hamlet. I will invite the most kind and talented women to be her life teachers. Seven kind and talented teachers came to celebrate the princess's birthday and promised to give her an education in all perfections a girl could have. As gifts for the seven kind teachers, the king ordered seven gold cases to be made for the princess's birthday party. The party had started and all were chatting merrily when suddenly they were interrupted by a senior woman. Why wasn't I invited? Dear woman, I'm sorry we searched the land for all the best teachers. Perhaps you were travelling abroad. I will have a place set at once. The angry woman was seated with the others, but it was too late for her to have a case of gold made. Cheat me on my gift, will they? They will pay for this. She was really evil and a witch. She means to harm the princess. Understood the teacher of wisdom. It's time for the teachers to tell how they will teach the princess. I must hide so that I can be last to speak my words. Then, perhaps, I can undo the wicked words of the witch. Beauty is my gift. Your warm, kind smiles will light the countryside for miles. My gift is grace, a manner sweet you will make happy all you meet. From the art of dancing now, I give to you a twinkling toe. I give you wit to understand how to rule peacefully this land. You and the nightingale will sing as sweetly with the gift I bring. Music, the flute, the harp, the lyre. You will play all that you desire. Yay, it will be so good, so beautiful. Yuppie, bring it on. Yay. As the evil witch drew near the baby princess, everyone became silent. I give you this. Before you are full grown, a spindle will go through your finger and you will die. The poor queen swooned to hear so terrible a curse. Ah, how wicked, how cruel. Poor, poor princess. Wait, I can undo some of the evil. The wise teacher told. I cannot change the curse alone, but with God's help, the princess will not die. Little princess, you will indeed pierce your hand with a spindle. But instead of dying, you will fall into a deep, deep sleep. You will sleep for a hundred years. A hundred years? Yes. And at the end of that time, 
a king's son shall come and wake you, and your life will begin again. Hoping to prevent the words of the curse from taking effect, the king ordered all the spindles in the land to be destroyed. The years passed. The princess grew very lovely and beautiful. She could sing and dance and play sweet music. However, there were times when she was lonely. I'm tired of studying and I have not one to play with. I think I will explore the castle. Here is a tower I never climbed before. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder what I will find there. She opened a door at the top of the stairs and peeked in. She was surprised to see a good woman sitting at a spinning wheel. What are you doing, good woman? And what is that strange wheel you work with? Why I am spinning, my pretty? Spinning thread to make clothes. Have you ever seen wheel before? No, let me watch how it's done. Oh, this looks like fun. Here, let me try. Almost as though it had come alive, the spindle pricked the princess's finger. In an instant, she fell to the floor. She fainted! Someone, come quickly! Come quickly, help! The people of the palace hurried to the princess's aid. They patted her on the face and rubbed her brow with water, but nothing seems to help. There's nothing we can do. It's the work of the witch. She will sleep a hundred years. The king ordered that his daughter be put to bed in the most beautiful room of the palace where no one would disturb her while the years passed. That evening, the best messenger sped towards the wise teacher. He was soon before the teacher whose words had saved the princess from the wicked curse of death. You asked me to tell you when the spell had worked. I have come at once. Thank you. Thank you. Quickly get my chariot. Fast as lightning, the wise teacher got to the side of the sleeping beauty. You have done well, my king. Now I must complete my job. When the princess awakens, she must not feel strange in the world. So I will see that she retains her court just as it is today. All were touched by the wisdom teacher, the maids of honour, the ladies-in-waiting, the gentlemen, the officers, the cooks and the undercooks, even the horses and the cats and the dogs, all were put to sleep. All except the king and queen who had to stay awake to rule the kingdom had gone to sleep. As the royal couple left to begin its rule from a place in a nearby city, a strange thing happened. In less than an hour, the home of the Sleeping Beauty was overgrown with a wild, tangled forest. A hundred years went by slowly. The king and queen passed away. Wars were fought. A new family came to the throne. When the new king's son grew up, his favourite sport was hunting. He would ride for miles through the forests chasing wild deer. One day, what's that? A castle in this wild place? The prince rode into the town and asked about the old palace. Oh there, what do you know about that old castle? Who lives there? Witches, sir, you'd do well to stay away from that place. Young prince, 
it is better not to ask about the hidden castle. They say it is a haunted by evil spirits. I've heard weird tales about that castle. Surely they're not true. What mm. do you know about it? You see, my grandfather tells a story about a sleeping princess. Then lead me to your grandfather at once. I must hear his story. Yes, sir. Follow me. As the prince listened to the old farmer, a strange feeling came over him. And they say the haunted years have passed. Many have tried to break through those woods to reach the castle, but none has succeeded. Then I will go. No, young sir, those who have gone have never come back. Don't, you may be hurt. But the prince would not listen to the warning, and he quickly rode back to the forest. Leaving his horse, he approached the tangled woods. There's no way in. I have no axe. Yet I seem to be drawn toward this place by some strange power. Suddenly, a clear path appeared in the tangled woods. The trees have moved aside to let me pass. Now you're recording again, love. The woods have closed behind me. I cannot go back. Perhaps the farmer was right. It was foolish of me to come alone. Well, I'm ready for what may come. I shall walk ahead. At last, the castle. But there seems to be no sign of life. He entered the courtyard. What's all this? He's asleep. The story the old man told is true. The whole place is asleep. The nobles of the court, they're just as they were 100 years ago. Then the prince entered the chamber of the sleeping beauty. At that moment, the evil spell ended and the princess awoke. Is it you, my prince? After supper, the prince and princess were married. Yay! They set out at once for the prince's palace. Why, look, the woods have cleared away. Somewhere in the land, the wise teacher heard the news. And will they now live happily ever after? Yes, they will. God's work is done. Thank you, God. The prince was so happy when he saw the beautiful princess. He was speechless. I have dreamed of you for all those years. By now the entire palace was awake. And since they'd not eaten for 100 years, all the people were very hungry. Order supper at once! Light the fires! Put on the pots! Hours later, the prince and princess were still talking. Highness, supper is ready. She is so pretty! My loyal, loyal people, have you rested well? <laughs>